Hey guys. Hi guys. Today we want to talk to you about our experience being on a river versus being in a canal. At this point we spend the majority of our time on the canal but we have experienced uh, three rivers so we thought it would be useful to share what we think. These are our general thoughts. Obviously there might be some exemptions but this is what we have experienced. Okay, so a river is obviously natural and a canal is man-made. So they tend to be in straight lines, canals, with a few bends, whereas rivers are a lot more bendy. So the main difference about being on a river versus a canal is flow. So you're either going upstream or downstream, and this can vary river to river. So on the Thames, we were quite surprised. There wasn't much flow on the Thames, yet when we went to the River Ouse, um to visit, um, my uncle and stuff. The flow there is is immense um, and a bit of rain will change the water levels by a few feet whereas it takes a lot of rain on the Thames to do that. But yeah the main difference is the flow, being exposed to the elements and you know being at the whim of nature. With the current maneuvering on a river can be more challenging. Yes you can go faster downstream with the current but also turning and getting into the lock and out of the lock with the current can be more difficult. So if you are cruising a river, some are inland rivers and some are tidal. So if you're tidal, you will need to have life jackets, an anchor, a VHF license, all of which we don't have. Um, yet. Yet. Um, but one day we'll do a tidal river um, and do all of those things. The cruising speed on the river is faster than on the canal. So on the Thames, it's eight kilometers per hour. And on the canal, I'm not sure what it is, about three, four miles an hour, I believe. Yeah, it's really slow on the canal. It's about walking speed. So there are smaller boats on the river and they whiz past you. So if you're used to very slow canal traffic, you might find, you might find a little unsettling. Equally, going back from a really wide river onto a canal where everyone moves a lot slower but because it's a lot narrower you see boats are moving really really close to you and we've been on the Thames for the whole summer all of a sudden we were like oh my god this is so close but that's absolutely fine we're just not used to it turning around on a river compared to a canal some might say it's easier some might say it's harder but it really depends on the conditions uh, obviously being on the thames it's so wide so we can turn around anywhere uh, whereas on a narrow boat finding 60 foot two foot to turn around in um you know you have to look around and sometimes you can be going quite a long way in one direction just to turn around our friend just messaged us and said that uh, she was traveling one direction but they needed to go for two hours just to turn around because her boat is equally um, as long as ours so you might not need to do that on the river, you might be able to turn around anywhere. The next difference of being on a river versus canal is general landscape around. The history of UK canals is closely tied on with industrial revolution, so often canals uh, run around uh, many industrial sites, uh, railways and stuff like that, so there will be places on the canal, sometimes you would have to cruise past industrial areas and it's not always really really pretty often it is but there are areas that you kind of want to avoid whereas our experience of being in a river it is natural uh, there aren't many industrial sites nearby and it's pretty wild the trees are a lot older and you could just feel a very different vibe on being in a river versus canal mooring up on uh, canal versus a river like there's a towpath on a canal so there's always somewhere sturdy and reliable you can pretty much moor anywhere providing uh, you can get a pin in it which just makes it really easy the idea of moving and finding a spot isn't that difficult whereas on a river you vary at the whim of nature so yeah finding moorings on the river can be a bit tricky you have to be a little bit more creative um, you know you might need to use your gangplank more but can be really rewarding when you find that really nice remote spot that's just perfect and ticks all the boxes. Also on the canal, um, quite often um, the sides of the canal, um, they're made out of metal walls, like corrugated oh, I iron. I can't remember the name of them, but I'm sure you'll tell us. And that's another way you can moor up, you use a special 
right, uh, hook. Ra round hooks, um, which, so as soon as you see that, that means you can moor up straight away, really easy. I forgot what they're called, what they're called. Oh, price of license. Well, this is the dull bit. So, because uh, we're continuously cruising on the canal and river, we're going to have like two different prices for you. Obviously, we were just visiting the Thames, so we bought a monthly license for the Thames, which was about some about 200 and something quid 220 quid for and a they, month um they work it out by square footage not just by length of your boat yeah whereas on the canal we can only give you a reference for living um on the canal i'm sure if you got annual licenses for the river it'd be much cheaper but you know we pay about 80 90 pounds a month and we call that our council tax water bins etc so much cheaper to be on the canal so on the canal it's free to moor up uh, providing you're on the towpath whereas the Thames because everything is privately owned and there's quite often mooring fees now to be honest we've been pretty lucky we've only paid twice yes three times we paid three times we avoided most of it to be honest and yeah I mean it's fair enough private land why not? Makes sense. A uh, yeah. beautiful spot, why not? Um, but that can soon add up. If you're paying £10 a night plus £200 to be there, you know, you can see the difference between the two um, price wise. But um, don't let it put you off. The next difference between a river and a canal is access to facilities. So we keep banging on about recycling, mm. um, but on the river we struggled very much and couldn't find many facilities at all so we keep bringing our rubbish with us we've everywhere. got about a month and a half's worth of recycling at, at the moment yeah. yeah it's like filling up the world deck i mean they're pretty hit and miss on the canal as well most yeah. of the time there's no recycling um but you know there often is um but the thames it's just minimal facilities really sparsely apart and also when you get to one it's it might be the case that there's water there but no bins or you get there there's bins and no water and yeah and stuff like that i presume a lot of you out there is also going to be concerned about pump out and else we haven't got any information on that but again sparse you've really got to be thinking ahead you know and overcompensating and getting stuff done before you need it we use a app on our phones called open canal map it's really app. good it's great Not on the however Thames. as soon as you get on the Thames there aren't it doesn't show you any locks or facilities so it only works in the canal so if you're using electronic maps or apps you what you might need to buy um, a Thames or river guide whichever you get one to and this is the fun bit oh there's fun bit there's a fun bit Woo! the difference between a river and a canal most rivers and most canals is you can swim you can swim in the Thames, so you, you can swim in rivers. You can swim in most rivers. The water's moving, constantly moving. It hasn't got time to sit, stay stagnant. You know, if there is pollutants in the water, they're moving through and out. Um, whereas on a canal, the stuff pouring into the canal, it's going to stay there, and that's pretty much it. You wouldn't want to go swimming in a canal in the river in the summer. It can be really lovely. And that's why we chose to spend extra time as soon as we got on the Thames because it was just amazing. It's like being on holiday. You can go for swimming anytime. It was great. Take a ladder. Yeah, you're going to need a ladder. You're going to need a ladder. We didn't have a ladder. But and we regretted one. it instantly. Yeah, just being able to get out of the boat. If you've got a really nice remote spot, that's not always going to be the case where you can just get out at the bank. So a lot of people have maybe like rope ladders or ladder ladders or swimming ladders off the back. And we're like, who needs those uh, daft thing? Is that for um, ducks? Is that for ducks? <laughs> But yeah, 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 you'll need a ladder. We found one in the end, our last week on the Thames, so we've kept that for next year. What do you think you prefer, canal or river? I think they have their different charms. A river, the river's been amazing this summer, being out in nature, beautiful epic scenery, um, being able to swim, fantastic. Canal, they are much more convenient, you feel a bit safer, a bit more sturdy, a bit more connected to society in a way in a nice way but you're still in the middle of the countryside and it's still beautiful yeah so a canal is more convenient than a river often in, on the river you're going to be in the middle of nowhere just enjoying the middle of nowhere whereas on a canal we tend to be sort of outside a village somewhere convenient we've got a towpath and just wait to everyone i like canals there's a lot less stress on the canal 
you're not worried about whether your pegs are going to come undone and whether your boat's going to wash away and if it's raining, ringing people that might be nearby to just go see if it hasn't washed up somewhere. I agree with that. There is a little bit more hustle in the river, but I think uh, being in a river in summer is totally worth it. That's my final decision. Hope you guys found this useful and it gave you a little bit of information about the rivers. If you've never ventured in a river before, maybe that will inspire you to do so. If you have any more questions, leave them down below. If you're new here, subscribe, follow along our journey. We've got loads of vlogs about living in the Thames. Follow along our journey on the canal and then switching down onto the river. Yeah, hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy it. See you next Saturday. See you in the next one. Bye.